Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this episode of From Vice to Water, we're going to talk about rigging dropper flies. Stay tuned. Welcome to part two of my two-part series on dropper flies. Now part one was a really fun video to make. In that video, I talked about the notion of having a point fly, something that's part of a tandem rig, and then having dropper flies directly behind it. From that, we're now leading into this part two where we're gonna talk about the notion of dropper flies, but they're found above the point fly. Now, in case you haven't watched part one yet, I'll put a link to it on the screen right now so you can go back and watch that. And I'll also include a link to it in the description of this video. But let's move forward because I really wanna kinda of get involved in this second part of the information. So to kind of just refresh our memory a little bit about where the, this video is kind of heading, we have this rig that's called a tandem rig. And what that basically means is that we're fishing more than one fly all on the same line. Now from that tandem rig, we have this main fly that's attached and we're calling that the point fly. As a quick refresher, let's just say we're fishing a, a nymph leader or a streamer leader. It's around an eight foot leader. Maybe it's tapering to about three X. And that first fly that we tie onto that 3X is the point fly. I typically use really heavy, larger flies for the point. We're talking sizes 8, size 10, streamers, stone flies, heavy jig nymphs. From there, we can start adding multiple flies on. And that's where the fun begins because we can really just kind of double up our chances or even triple it up in some cases. In Pennsylvania, we're allowed to fish up to three flies at one time. And that's a great advantage we have when we're chasing some of these difficult trout. So as I mentioned in part one, we were talking about the notion of having dropper flies, but they were coming behind the point fly. And we were basically using a cinch or a clinch knot to attach a loop to the bend of the hook and then attach a fly to that tippet and then do the same thing so we would have a total of three flies in line. But next, let's start talking about the notion of having this point fly, but then placing flies above it on the line. And that's where some difficulty lies in fly fishing. I can tell you it's not an easy thing to do. But before I show, start showing you the methods that I use to attach those flies, let's talk about why we'd even want them above this point fly. Well, as I mentioned before, we had this point flying. Let's just say we were fishing another streamer behind it and then a nymph behind that. Now, we were fishing that way because maybe it's early spring. There's not a lot going on. The fish aren't very active and we're just trying to see what's going on in the bottom of the water. So we're bringing this through the, the riffles. We're bringing this through pools. We're picking up some fish, but then soon enough, we notice that maybe there's some caddis that are starting to emerge. Maybe we know of a mayfly hatch that's gonna be beginning soon. And we start to see some fish flashing a little bit. Maybe we start to see them moving up in the water column and we're not picking up as many fish as we did previously on these streamers and nymphs. Now it's time to make a change. Now in some instances, you may wanna just say, let's leave our point fly on, let's leave the second dropper, but let's cut off that third dropper and let's attach a fly a little bit further up our leader. So basically, we're still gonna have our point fly that's down the bottom. We may have a nymph or another streamer that's behind it. But let's tie on another fly, maybe two feet up, that's gonna represent one of those insects that's beginning to emerge. Maybe it's something like a caddis pupa or a mayfly emerger. A great fly that I love to fish is a bar emerger. It's a really great pattern, and I love to fish it in between my nymphs on the bottom and the dry flies on the top. So we've started to recognize that there's instances where we wanna have flies further up in the leader, and it's when those fish are starting to move up in the water, col water column, and they're taking those insects as they emerge. But now the difficulty is, how do you get that fly tied on somewhere above your point fly? Now I can tell you over the last 15 years or so, I have experimented with so many different ways to attach my fly somehow to this leader. A really easy method that people used to tell me was whenever you tie it on your tippet, there'd be a blood knot because you tie your two pieces together with a blood knot and just leave one tag end a little longer. And that works for a while, but every time that you go to change that dropper that's above, you're always just cutting back, cutting back, cutting back that tag end of that line to the point where you don't have any line left after you've made just a few changes. So that was a good one, but it, it didn't work that well. I've also experimented most, we'll say recently with tippet rings. And they work well, but 
that's still something that I'm not loving because if I want to have multiple droppers higher up, then I have to have multiple tippet rings. They're nice, but it's not the solution that I'm currently using. The method that I'm now going to is something called the dropper loop. So we have, again, my point fly. And with the point fly on, approximately two feet up, I have what we call a dropper loop. And it's a really neat loop that I've tied in place. And from that point, I can simply tie on another piece of tippet and attach it to this loop with like a cinch or a clinch knot, or I can actually put a loop in a piece of tippet and make a loop to loop connection. It's really nice because if I wanna make a change, I just clip that new piece of tippet off and I still have my loop and I can add more flies to it. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about the leader that I have on my line. Now, I fish multiple reels and multiple spools. So I typically have one reel and a couple spools that are dedicated to nymph fishing. It's really a nice luxury that I have. Because of that, I have leaders that I dedicate to just nymph fishing. So imagine my nine foot nymph leader, we'll just call it a generic leader, or that streamer leader, and I already have two or three of these dropper loops built into it because I'm not sure where those fish are gonna be in the water column. I can tell you that a couple will kind of say rules about these dropper loops. I typically have them about two feet up from the point fly. There's, that's my first one. Then maybe another 18 inches and another 18 inches. So I'm really trying to get them off of the bottom because I know for the most part, this point fly is gonna be on the bottom and unless I'm fishing a really shallow riffle, I'm probably gonna be fishing something that's anywhere between two to four feet deep. So I wanna have these a little bit higher up to get those fish that are in the middle of the water column. Now, a couple more rules about these. I try to keep them at least 12 inches apart. So all of my dropper loops are gonna be about a foot apart. And there's a major reason, and that's because whenever I tie a piece of tippet onto this and I attach that fly, if I have one coming off this first dropper loop, and then I have another one coming up coming off that second dropper loop, and I've made that tippet, we'll say, eight inches long. Well, eight inches plus eight inches is 16 inches. And if I only have them 12 inches apart, you know that those two flies are going to just get tangled up. So we have to think a little bit more about how we're attaching those flies to these dropper loops. I can tell you from experience, you don't have to have a really crazy long piece of tippet. And in fact, I'm gonna encourage you to keep that tippet length to anywhere between three to six inches coming off of this dropper loop. Any longer than that, and that fly could get tangled with another fly, or even worse, it will just get all tangled in your leader and it will just wreak havoc and possibly ruin a good 10 minutes of your fishing time. Trust me, it's happened to me, it's not fun at all. So instead, for that, that piece of tippet, I would go with something fairly significant. We're talking anywhere between 3X, maybe 4X, sometimes 5X, but I can tell you I typically don't go that low, especially in faster moving water to these loops, or to, I'm sorry, to the tippet off of these loops. So we're gonna go with somewhere around that 4X tippet. It's gonna be around four inches long, and we're gonna attach our soft tackles and our mergers to those. So those are gonna be our dropper flies that are above our point fly. Well, I hope that system makes a little sense to you. Um, I can tell you from experimentation, there have been a few other systems out there that I've used a few other types of knots. There's even been these plastic connectors that you actually build into your leader and they help create all these dropper situations for you. But personally, I just haven't liked them. I can tell you the dropper loop is a really great system. It can be a little difficult to learn that knot at first. And as you noticed, I am not going to demonstrate it here because I don't think I'm that good at it. But I can assure you, I'll put a link to a video that explains the dropper loop down below. And I encourage you to watch that Practice with, with some monofilament at some point. That way when you get to the water, if you have to put a dropper loop in, you can just move over. It'll take about 30 seconds, get that loop going, and then you can start attaching a dropper. Otherwise, I'll make the advice to you, have a couple dedicated nymph and streamer leaders and have a few dropper loops already included. That way you don't have to stress and you don't have to worry about doing it on the stream in the moment when you realize that those fish are starting to move up in the water column. Well, again, this is part two in this two-part series on droppers. And we just talked about the notion of setting a dropper fly or two dropper flies above that point fly. If you have any questions or comments regarding this video or this technique, please email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. You can also leave a comment in the comments section below on this video. And I greatly encourage you to do so, especially for those of you who love to fish dropper flies 
above the point fly. I am always interested to hear what other methods are out there and I can assure you that this dropper loop is my current method but I am definitely not opposed to hearing what else is successful for all of you out there because I'd love to try some other methods. It can, it can be kind of maddening at times because there's about 40 different ways to do it but I'd love to hear some of those other ways and for those of you new to fly fishing I definitely encourage you to check out that comment section and kind of look at it as a resource to see what others are doing and what they're having success with around the country and other countries. If you'd like to watch more of my fly fishing and fly tying videos, I encourage you to check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram, and if you like and follow those, you'll receive some regular fly fishing and fly tying updates. Well, once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope it makes a lot more sense to you when you go out wanting to fish some dropper flies off of your point.